guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics and this is Q&A number three with questions from Facebook, Instagram and the YouTube channel. Now, a couple of videos ago I asked for questions for the Q&A, I know it's a little late but I'm still gonna answer them. Anyway, let's get straight into the video. Question number one. For the next Q&A, how do you get that American accent? I barely hear that you're from the Netherlands. Um, well, I can still improve a lot of my English in my opinion, but I have watched a lot of English shows, you know, I watch a lot of English series and I choose not to have subtitles on them so that I understand the words and actually listen to the words instead of reading what's on the screen and uh, you know I've also watched uh, shows like Dragon Ball Z from age age 8 or age 7 for years so at a young age I already learned how to speak basic English and um, you know I've had pretty good English teachers as well so I guess that combination helped me to acquire this accent. Johannes S asks, Hey Wesley, my question is, I have been putting on mass on my chest, but I am lacking in the inner upper pec section. Any advice on exercises on what to do? Well, first of all, it's only possible to train the upper and the lower pecs. There is no inner. It's just where your uh, pectoral muscles attach to the bone, you cannot change. You know, if, got, if you got a gap in the middle, it's hard to change. Uh, the only way to make it appear smaller is to build upper pec mass. Because if this is full, this is full, the area in between will look smaller. But how do you build your upper pecs then? Well, I like to start out every chest session with an incline movement so that can be the incline bench press or even the incline military press that I have showed a couple times in the videos or incline dumbbell, pr dumbbell press at least as long as you uh, prioritize the upper portion of the pecs which you target with incline movements you will be able to let it grow faster opposed to the lower portion of the chest but that's all ways included and just make sure to keep your form straight keep your form good so don't stop right here but actually go all the way down go all the way up go all the way down on the incline movements and uh, for example with flies make sure you stretch all the way um, and then when you go up when you do the dumbbell version don't try and force to contract but let go right before go down again right before you lose tension stuff like that but I'll I'll explain that in all my chest videos so that's my tip go watch those and you should learn one or two things next question workout 24 7 asks hey I'm done my I have done my bulking and I want to cut. I weigh 90 kilos and I want to lose fat. How many calories do you think I should eat? Also, I don't want to lose my strength and muscle mass. And I'm not active. I'm only active in the gym five to six days a week. Well, first of all, I don't know how many calories you need because I would need your height, your age, uh, your body weight, lean body mass, uh, etc. But what I can tell you is that you, when you know how many calories you eat, um, in order to maintain your current weight, you should only go down 250 calories below those calories. So for example, if you can eat 2,500 calories and you won't gain or lose any weight, go to 2,250 calories. And then add cardio sessions of 20 minutes after each workout, except for legs. Um, you know, keep your heart rate about 130 beats per minute. This will, um, you now if you do it for 20 minutes, it won't burn muscle protein, but it will only focus on the fat. And it's not much, 20 minutes is not much, but it will add that extra edge, just a little extra fat that you're losing, so you don't have to go that deep in your uh, calories. You don't have to cut that deep. And the slower it goes, the more consistent your fat loss will go. So that's my tip to you. 
Nihat Beckler asks, Wesley, I have constant elbow pain on my both arms, but I cannot give up pushing hard in the gym. Pressing movements is a big headache. My question is, where did I make a mistake? Could you advise any relieving exercises? Is it still bench heavy? I think it isn't as bad. Um, usually you get elbow pains by doing skull crushers. This exercise is way too heavy. A lot of stress on the elbows. And that's why I like to do the French press, which uh, is behind the head like this. And it relieves the elbows of the stress the weight puts upon your arm. And, go, and it goes more to your triceps, especially this long head. Because if you do this, as you can see, the weight is straight onto the elbows. When you go behind your head, the weight is straight onto this part of the triceps. So that's one way to do it. And that, but when you already have the pain, I suggest doing cable work until the pain subsides. Now with some people, the pain can endure for years, depending on how long you already have it. Um, there's no really fix for it, except don't do anything that causes it. So when you do cables, I would do an overhead cable extension like this. You just put a, get a rope and you do the exercise like this. And for some reason, because of the angle of the movement, you don't feel any elbow pain at all. I've heard, heard many people say it. I've actually experienced a little bit of elbow pain myself in the past. Um, and when I did, I stopped doing exercises that caused the pain and did exercises that I didn't feel it with, such as the cable uh, overhead extension. Next question. Anthony Intensity asks, What's your opinion about the men's physique classes, especially those with the big names like Jeremy Buendia, Anton Antipov, Jason Poston, George Brown, Brandon Hendrickson, and so on? Do they have the potential to be compared with the golden era or of bodybuilding? Well, with the new class, classic physique on the rise, I think um, guys like that have the potential to be really good bodybuilders, but they know that they cannot get big enough for the Olympia stage. And up till now, there wasn't anything in between the men's physique and the bodybuilding stage, but now there will be classic physique, which is a that's basically the golden era of bodybuilding. And that's actually what I'm trying to get into as well. Still need to research it a lot more because it's recently new, pretty new, I mean. So I gotta see how the winners look. But um, I think classic physique is a great class for those guys if they wanna grow a little more. Uh, they already have the aesthetic body, just like Frank Zane. So, um, you know, Frank Zane, would be a man's physique competitor these days. He kind of has the same aesthetics. Except the classic uh, physique category will bring out other qualities of the names that you mentioned. Because uh, in the man's physique department, you cannot really show off your physique in the same way as on the classic physique class. So that's my opinion about that. Realm Ghost. R-O-T-M-G asks, what do you eat on a non-lifting day? I basically eat the exact same, uh, except for the, for the post-workout shake. So usually that's about 300 calories. So I guess, um, well, the thing is, I always track my calories to around 4,000 calories each day. So even if I don't drink the shake, I kind of, you know, compensated with uh, adding some more to other meals a little more fish a little more rice etc so I eat the same amount of calories and the reason I do that is because in the days that you don't train you still got to recover from the days that you did train so if you would eat less on the days that you're supposed to recover that doesn't really make sense to me so I always eat the same amount of calories every day to fuel my body for recovery. Next question. Clem Canthesis asks, thanks again for sharing the huge motivation and the enlightenment, Wesley. Well, no problem. One question in this video brought another one to my mind. You say you keep your protein at a high level. How much grams per kilos of body weight does it represent? Well, I weigh around 240. So 240 LBS pounds. So that's around 110 kilos. So I would say 
um, about 2.2 grams every pound or I mean every kilo or one gram of protein per pound of body weight so so I eat around 250 grams of protein a day and that's a little higher than the 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight because that would be around um, 230 240 uh, grams of protein but the reason that I like to eat 250 grams of protein is because it's a little higher than the recommendations and first of all that's just because then you know that you're getting enough in for sure because some days you might be working out more than usual you might have, might walk around more you might do more you might be more active or uh, you had a very heavy leg session and you kind of want those extra grams of protein just as a backup even though it's probably placebo but it's still you know it's only a couple of grams more and it's a nice round even number but uh, more the more protein you eat the harder it is for your body to convert that into fat carbs are converted directly into fat when you're eating too many you know when you're already above your calorie level and you eat carbs is directly fat but when you eat protein above that level it's uh, your body has to do multiple steps before it turns into fat burning energy in order to go through those processes so that's why it's always beneficial to eat a little more protein while cutting because then you burn body fat easier while still being able to eat quite a lot so that's kind of the reason because I want to stay lean in the lean bulk and because it's good for recovery. Hemza Tafili asks, um, how can I mix my training routine between normal supersets, drop sets, high reps, and heavy weights? So basically, you work out on average five days a week, chest triceps, back biceps, legs, shoulders, and something else. And what I recommend is at least once a week, uh, doesn't matter which day, for example, you do your back and biceps day, um, then that day you choose to do some kind of drop set or super set just to mix it up for that day. But once a week, I would do that minimally. But don't do it every day. You gotta find a balance in this. You, know, you, you could just be spending a couple of weeks doing the exact same, and then that will be a very nice opportunity to include a super set or a drop set or a, you know a, a very different set like starting out with a heavy weight and do at least 50 reps with it or dropping the weight every time you go to failure uh, stuff like that but don't do it every workout but do it at least once a, a week in my opinion just to switch things up JD asks hey I work my calves about four times a week using no weights just body weight is that okay with no weights, just body weight. Well, in my opinion, you're already working them out with your body weight every single day, every time you walk. Because when you walk, your calves have to produce enough force to lift your body weight up. So you're already doing calf raises the entire day with your own body weight. So in the gym, what you want to do is let your calves experience stress that they don't experience during the day and that's why most people have trouble developing the calves the calves because they're used to a lot of work when you especially when you walk the stairs a lot when you do a lot of walking in general they are used to being used a lot their uh, the muscle fibers are constantly stretched and contracted throughout the day so what you want to do first of all use a full range of motion go you know this is the platform go all the way down and all the way up some people do this uh, some people do this no all the way down and all the way up contract and stretch those calves as much as possible that is step one step two is choosing a heavy weight that you are not used to especially on the standing calf raise because you're body weight is the weight that your calves that's the default so that's if you weigh 200 pounds your calves can do 200 pounds thousand times <laughs> just to say but you want to increase the weight to 
a high, as a high amount as possible with good form. So add 100 kilos to your own body weight, but you still got to be able to go all the way down and all the way up with it. If you can't lower the weight, you got to control those calf muscles. You got to be able to use them while doing the exercise because don't just go through the movement they're used to that make them experience something they cannot just recover from like when you walk they have to die and get resurrected again to grow keep that in mind next question marcus lindgren asks when you pyramid when you do pyramid sets of 12 10 8 6 4 reps for example do you keep the same weight or drop it by any special percentage well it's not any special percentage and i don't keep the weight the same um because you first of all you want progressive overload and what that means is that you start out with a weight then progressively add weight to that exercise so when you do for example on the bench press you do 12 reps with 100 pounds but you got to make sure that those 12 reps are challenging already so you don't want to just knock them out you want to feel resistance that the 12th rep is pretty difficult to perform then the next set is 10 reps you do 120 pounds and those 10 reps are difficult then you do eight reps 140 pounds and every time those last one or two reps have to feel difficult now this this is something that you have to learn about yourself because you don't know what way to choose for each set and that's just experimenting even me myself find it difficult to find the correct weight per set but the most important thing about pyramid setting is that at least at the eight reps six reps and the four reps those have to be hard especially the last set pretty much has to go to failure in my opinion at least that's how i always do it so um always always increase the weight when your reps go down always increase the weight next question Arlon Edo asks, how important is posing? I want to get into bodybuilding and have read that it's helpful, but how so? What are the best mandatory poses to do and when should I do them? Um, well, um, doing poses, it is not essential to, you know, to build a good body, but it's very useful. As Arnold Schwarzenegger says, said, with the, in between his sets he would activate the muscles that he's training for example when you do a bench press he would do the side chest and the most muscular well um in between the sets to keep those muscles full and activated and the, to me the most important aspect of posing is that you learn to control the muscles without adding stress of weights to them so you got to be able to bounce your chest got to be able to contract your biceps, triceps, forearms, you know, uh, side delts, traps, neck, <laughs> and more. Um, and when you can do that, you can perform so many more exercises correctly because then you know how to how you should activate those muscles. For example, if you do uh, rear that row and you don't know how to contract this muscle you might do this with your traps but if you know how to contract it you know that you have to do this in order to really contract those rear delts um, it's something that you have to experience and that's why posing is important because it teaches you how to control your muscles now what poses should you do for example, when you train chest, you can do the side chest, you could, and when you train arms, uh, the front double biceps, the side tricep, when you do uh, back, the back lat spread, uh, the back double bicep, and every time that you do those poses, after you did the workout, you will feel those specific muscles that you just trained um, under great stress, and you will feel them more consciously, and that's how you learn how to control those muscles so um, you don't have to go all out posing just um, inside your mind just try to contract those muscles maybe but the poses are meant um, 
to control and contract those muscles in the most optimal, optimal way. So that's why poses are a very good tool to use, but you don't have to do an actual pose. You can just contract those muscles um, with your mind in any way that you want, but it's just more easy when you convert it into a bodybuilding pose. So frontable biceps, you know, you automatically, uh, you, know, you can see the split right there. Do you see that? But anyway, you contract those biceps, man, but when you train back and you still do the front of the biceps, you actually also include the lats. So anyway, it's just a good addition to your workouts. Not essential, but it will certainly help you. Next question. Alex Ferenc asks, was hoping you could discuss your cardio routine. What machines do you use? Time, intensity, slow pace or high intensity? Keep up the golden work. I certainly will. Um, the machines that I use is basically either the treadmill or the elliptical machine. And I actually prefer the elliptical because it kind of uses um, your whole body more. Um, but walking is to me the best form of cardio. But to, to, because it's more natural, but you have to do it longer because it burns less fat. The elliptical, you can go a little more intense as long as you stay within the 130 BPM beats per minute range. And that's um, one other part of your question, slow pace or high intensity. I have never done a high intensity uh, type of cardio. I know that it works because a lot of bodybuilders do this, but to me, slow pace in combination with a good diet helps me the best because the slow pace ensures that I only burn the fat because after working out, your glycogen in your muscles is gone, uh, which means that there are carbs. There are no carbs left, only fat left to burn, which you can do if you go slowly because fat requires a lot of oxygen to burn, more oxygen than regular carbohydrates. So when you walk slow, you can breathe better. And that's why I don't want to go above 130 beats per minute because that is the optimal range of fat burning for most people. Um, and the time, I usually do about 20 minutes starting out the first couple of weeks and then slowly building it up to 25, 30 minutes, 35 maximum after every workout except for legs. So that's kind of how I do my cardio routine. Next question. What do you do for more mobility work? Uh, Dutch Raver asks. Warm-ups and injury prevention? Well, for mobility, what I like to do is basically, first of all, use full range of motion on every exercise that you do. For some exercises, in my case, for example, the squats, that is very difficult to do, so I use some um, aids like a uh, small plateau under my heels so I can go deeper with my body. I can go deeper than 90 degrees because my ankle flexibility isn't that good. But I usually I just warm up, for example, on the bench press or any other exercise, usually the first set with 20 to 30 reps using the muscle that I'm supposed to train, not just go through the motion, but the muscle that I'm about to train I want to have 30 reps using that muscle before I go heavy so that I know that the muscle is ready. I don't feel pain. It's warmed up. It's warm. It's filled with blood and we are ready to go. If I do feel any aches or pain, I will um, usually I would add a certain amount of weight as my first set, but then I would do another warm, warm up set with a lighter weight again to be able uh, to prevent any injuries because when you feel the slightest pain you really should keep in your head that that pain could evolve to something much worse when you go much heavier so always build it up slow even when you feel good always do a warm up set and um, uh, the only kind of stretching that I do is uh, between sets for biceps I usually do the crucifix pose as you can see when I do this, it stretches the bicep, you kind of turn your arm like that. You stretch your bicep as well. Uh, for legs, I just do the, uh, you know, the famous bent over hamstring stretch or uh, I go at my knees and I lean back 
for the quads and there's a lot of other stretches that I do but I don't really make them a dominant part of my workout just when I feel that I need to stretch I do it um, when I feel any aches or something I make sure that I find the right spot and then I stretch that area out make sure it keeps uh, the blood circulating but I'm gonna make a video about all the kinds of stretches and mobility work that I do especially for shoulders I used to do a lot of uh, rotator cuff exercises like this to really target those little muscles inside of your shoulder uh, to help the shoulder joint keep it healthy rather than just uh, put a lot of muscle on it but keeping those intricate muscles weak that's not what you want to do but that's for a different video next question Yu Chang Shui asks does it mean losing muscle when you feel hungry or does it mean losing fat it means neither you don't lose muscle or fat when you're hungry when you're hungry it simply means that your body is telling you that your stomach is emptied or empty enough for it to fit itself again with food but it could also mean that your previous meal was high in sugars which spikes your insulin levels and then it drops down so then your blood sugar levels are low and when they are low your body is also triggered to want to eat something and you're again hungry but when you combine hunger with eight hours of not eating then you might be losing muscle if you repeat that every single day but I would not worry about it um, I'm hungry all the time even though I eat every two hours so I'm not losing muscle or losing fat depending on what diet I'm doing but um, when you feel hungry when you're uh, cutting it usually means when the diet is good enough protein enough healthy fats it usually means that you're just losing fat it's not causation it's correlation that's what I'm trying to say next and last question Max Vegas asks hi Wes just wondering if you incorporate a deload week into your training regimen do you have a full week off do you do still go to, do or do you still go to the gym I have done a deload week twice in my life um, I simply feel that I don't really need one because I make sure that I sleep and eat enough uh, but when you feel sluggish when you feel tired when you feel uh, not as strong as usual then a deload week is recommended just to reset the body but what you don't want to do is sit at home you want to keep activating the muscles so do about half of your weight I would keep the reps and the sets well the volume should go down to about 75 percent use about 50 percent of the weight so you keep using those muscles but don't push yourself to the max get enough sleep eat enough food especially protein and healthy fats and um, enough vegetables and fruits as well just make sure that you recover in that week you have to keep using those muscles for you to stay the same size you don't want to sit at home because that won't do anything to benefit your current situation and that was it guys that was the Q&A of today I hope you enjoyed it there's a lot more content coming the summer holidays are on their way and the most important thing actually I will have a new computer finally one that is significantly exponentially a super sane version of my current computer I can assure you that oh I'm sorry oh, my camera died I thought I was gonna make it but I didn't so this is my Samsung using the front camera because otherwise I can't see myself and I usually point it in the wrong direction but anyway, um, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot more content coming. And as I said, I have a new computer now. Uh, my old computer, it used to make me render the videos for the entire night. And now I can upload it the evening before instead of the morning. And then the next day I can go work on another video right away. So my plan is in the summer holidays, to work on the videos every single day and I aim to upload it at least four times a week 
know, every day is a little bit unrealistic because things always come up when I say that. So um, at least three to four times, that's the bare minimum. And uh, if I can do more, I will do more. But this new computer will make a big difference. Um, it's a lot faster. I can render videos a lot better. I can edit a lot faster because this computer is starting to get a little ridiculous in that department. And um, yeah, I want to thank you for watching for the third time. And I'll leave a comment down below. Um, if you know, if you want to ask, if you want to see another Q and A, answer below, uh, or uh, I mean, uh, question me below. But use the hashtag Q and A or something just to know, because I like to answer the questions directly with a comment to your question but if you want it answered in a Q&A video then add something to the question so that I know that you want to see it in the video itself so maybe Q&A um, um, just add the word Q&A to it that would be a good addition for me anyway guys don't forget absolutely don't forget to stay golden Yeah.